middle and ending. So for the characters, that's for the first. And for the second, it's something that has to happen. And for third, you need to have an ending. And that are only the three ways of making a book. And I'll be also telling you the parts of the book which I've learned today. I mean yesterday. So obviously first the, is the front cover and it has the title and author's name on it and the illustrator's name. Then there are the like chapters there, the index. They include the what topics there are on the book. Like if you're fine, if you have a book of biography and yours, you don't know where to find your topic. You can go to the index and you can find all of the chapters there. Next is the back cover, and there's not really much interesting at the back. But it's really an important um, cover too. It kind of includes a summary sometimes at the back or a short version of the story, I guess. I usually see them on my books. And next are at like at the back of the book, but like it's not the back cover, but it's on the pages. You can find like spelling words there sometimes if you don't understand like the most commonly used words in the story. Like that. <laughs> I usually look there for words I don't know sometimes in my books. So that are all the parts of the book. I'll be telling you some more topics I've learned before. 
natural selection. Selection? Oh, wait. Survival of the fittest. What? Wait, natural selection? I know that, I know that. Wait, wait. Adopt the environment. Oh, yeah, that one. Okay, now I know. I am full of it now. Okay, it's like, um, for example, this is my opinion. In, in fact, I just want to say it all. Maybe that's true, maybe it's not. But I think that roses didn't have thorns in the past, just in my opinion. So I think they started to adapt to their environment because maybe they kept on getting eaten or something like that because animals kept on going near it and it, it could have made it extinct but then it's probably probably started to adapt horns thorns to protect itself like probably poisonous plants weren't poisonous in the past but then they started to adapt to their environment that made them make them poisonous like that because they don't want the, some plants got extinct because of that just some of them not really all of them like roses could have been extinct if they didn't have those thorns on them I like and those. like how cactuses wouldn't exist without their thorns as well and just a little fun fact is that cactuses have water in them store a lot of water in them to keep them fresh in the desert if they're really thirsty and that's why some animals eat them so that they can get refreshed and not starve to death like some humans even like cut the cactus open so that they can have the water inside that's pretty cool and another little thing i want to tell you is that if a cactus was in a rainforest i don't think it would survive and how a polar bear wouldn't survive in a desert because it adapted to their own environment that's why they have those thick fur if they were already in a hot environment that would make them even worse it would make them really hot and how a cactus already has enough water and it didn't even need more that's why they don't really are watered much and if they're in the rainforest they will get more than enough water than they need that's why make a guy parts of the plant It is just like waste and like the 
you know the rotten vegetables like that? Probably Ooh. that's good for that plant. Banana. Yeah, like if this banana was rotten, probably you could like make it into compost and then it will start to like break down and turn into like dust and the leftover nutrients of the thing. I guess you have to eat it first. And the leftover nutrients would probably go to the plant and that's why it's healthy, I guess. Like rotten vegetables, rotten fruits, and animal waste, I guess. Yeah. What are the needs of the plant? Needs of the plant? This one's easy. Number one is sunlight, of course. It gives them energy and no. space, liveliness, and space. Them. Yes, of course they need space. If they were near near plants, I'll tell you the reason why they need space. Number one reason is because they need to spread their roots around the ground. And that if they were near other plants, they probably their roots would get tangled in the ground and that it couldn't get enough nutrients and it might block their roots from passing into the plant, into the stem, into all the parts. That's why roots are important and space. <laughs> Next is some water to give them some freshness in them like just letting it rain probably would be good for the plant and so it can grow it doesn't always need sunlight just enough sunlight the best spot where there's not much but there's enough sunlight for the plant and some water not too much to drown the plant or else it might die that's why you need enough water enough sunlight uh, do you get it now hmm. next is compost of course like how I said earlier, you need compost for your plants too. So that you don't have to throw it all away in the garbage. Instead, just give it to your plants. Next. Mm, soil. Like, how is a plant gonna even survive without soil? Soil is the reason how it just lets the roots go into the ground. There are so many nutrients in there for the plant. And I need it. Like, I want healthy not the soil with all the chemicals in it. Healthy soil is recommended for me. For me, I usually don't recommend using the dry ones. I used to use the dry soil and it didn't. Fertile. Yeah, fertile soil, let's just say. Fertile soil. And I guess the right amount of digging, not like so deep into the ground or not too shallow. I used to do so shallow before and it, I noticed it doesn't even grow but now I realize that you're supposed to dig like medium not so big or not too shallow like that and then your plant will be able to spread its root properly and the stem will grow soon and also another fun fact is that a baby seed is called an embryo and it has a seed coat and that seed coat will disappear when it starts to grow it will like pop out of the plant and grow i did that experiment in my school before i saw the embryo kind of <laughs> cotyledon hmm? cotyledon part of it i have never heard of it Yummy. how about okay. cell oh cells Cells are one of the most important in your body. There are bad cells and good cells. Cells up close are very, very interesting. I've never seen one like real up close, but I've kind of seen one, I guess. Inside tech. Yeah, and fun fact, a very nice fun fact, and it's true. Mm, did you know that we all started from a cell? Literally all of us, no one else. No, not the bad. Us humans. Of course, not literally everything. Plant cells. Yeah. Plants also have cells too. They are different than animal cells and they're of course different from human cells as well. Not all of us have the same cells too. And uh, there are some bad things that can happen to your cell. Like if you, if you inhale bacteria, um, it might go inside your cell and infect it and it will turn it which is called a bad cell and no one likes bad cells because it can make you sick very very sick that's why 
which is called cancer. I have cancer, cancer cells, which is very bad for, in my opinion. I don't know if there's a cure. I guess. What is the definition of cell? Cell, it's the basic. It's the basic form of life. Un yeah, unit. It is the basic form of life.
countries. Tell me what they are. Acquired, not inherited. Acquired! Skill? Yeah, the skills. Skills you learn from your parents. Skills you learn after. After. Skills you learn.
that occupy that occupy space. Oh. So I'll tell you about liquid first. It takes the shape of its container, literally any shape. If you have a triangle shaped glass um, bottle, I guess you just pour the liquid in and it will take the shape. But if you remove the water out of it, it will just stay on the ground. Like it won't take any shape because it has no container. It's just or flat on the floor. Or if you put it into a plastic bottle, it will take this shape as well. For gas, the molecules in gas, they just like flow around freely. It's literally around us right now. You can't see it, but it is just like around us. I think the air we breathe is gas too. Yes, I am I right? Um, like if a type of gas is called helium, they kind of take this shape of their like space, I kind of, like kind of, because when you blow up a heart balloon with the helium, it kind of takes the shape, like it just floats and fills it up. And the solid, for solid, the molecules stay together, like they're together, like because they're like um, on together, they won't move, they won't take they won't take any shape of a container like this bag it's solid it doesn't take a shape from its container it's the molecules just stay together it won't tear apart and spread around like the gas and like the water like when the water spills the molecules just like kind of make a form a droplet i guess and for the gas the molecules just spread around the place can't get it anymore because you need to blow it up again and for solid it's so different than the liquid and gas it's just so interesting how those molecules are able to stay together to form the um, solid and there is a type of thing like black it's like when you punch it it feels so solid but when you like touch it carefully it feels so liquid I'm what type of liquid is that again? Ah! Oh, that, that felt like the roller coaster. I mean the bowl. That felt like... Uh, it's like ketchup. Like it feels solid, but it is kind of a liquid at, at the same time. It's like a type of liquid, but I'm not sure. I forgot. Mm, I really want to say that detail. That was so interesting. much 
water, they will start to can't hold it and burst out ash such as rain. And you can also call it condensation, and that's the name of the process. What yeah. is precipitation? Precipitation. Oh wait, the like water flowing out already. That's called precipitation. Now I remember. Mm -hmm. Evaporation. I'll tell you the steps. Evaporation condensation then precipitation am i right yes i was right this is easy i kind of remember the old topics i had in the past what are the forms of energy uh, re renewable and non-renewable oh. oh yeah like i think the renewable is the types of energy that that can you can you can use them for use mm -hmm. like thunder yes that's a type of energy did you know that Ben Franklin created a rod that uses the lightning energy which can create electricity yeah he created that lightning rod to be safe for houses so that their houses won't get hit by lightning instead that rod will observe the lightning and create it to for electricity and did you know that thunder can create electricity for four months straight but if you touch it you might get electrocuted that's why you don't touch the light bulbs if it's powered by thunder mm, that is called how light, about the windmill light energy wind yeah that can be used for energy as well also light another example of light energy is like the solar panels thingy like you can you, you can bake using the sun but it might take a bit of more time but yes you can still create heat with the sun if you leave your water outside out the hot sun it probably will turn hot and for the wind energy yes those use some people use those wood meals for electricity i think and water energy like I saw some types of factories with those kind of flowing water which create energy I saw those kinds I don't know what are those called but I saw one before in a video and it was so cool so there are light energy wind energy water energy Oh wait, there's even some sources from underground to create energy as well. There's also like mm, oil, I think it is. It's non? Yeah, it's a non-renewable re renewable, um, source. Why? Why? It's, it is because um, you cannot create more of it. There's only not that much anymore, but there are still a few more left. Like you cannot reuse it. When you use it, it's gone forever. Or if you use too much of it, that's already a waste. That's why most of you have to avoid oil spills because those are very bad. There's two reasons why. Because it's very bad for the oceans or the land. And second of all, it's because it's precious for powering cars. And if you spill like a gallon of that, that's such a big waste already. That's already and like could eat them. Yeah, and sometimes it might harm the oceans. Eat the plastic. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about the plastic, we're talking about the oil spills. Yeah, that's still mm -hmm. Some of them. How can we prevent pollution? <gasps> There's a way, basically. Instead of, if you don't have like a long destination, I recommend taking a bike or some type of vehicle that doesn't need to have gas coming out of it. <laughs> like biking like that, if you're good in it. Or if you only have to use cars if it's necessary. And another thing is that um, if you like work in an oil company or something, just probably prevent from going to oceans to do your job because it might spill there one time 
a place got so much oil spills, it took them a long time to clean that up. That's why you should probably prevent that because oil is really precious and another thing is that's so toxic to the environment. So not only at oceans that happens, even on land, that's bad for the soil thing. That's why I said you need fertile soil! plastic bottles. Oh, for that, basically you can take your own container instead of using plastic bottles. Or if you have no idea what to do with them, you could recycle them like that. That's one thing you could do if you have no idea what to do with them. Another thing is Other that uses for that? Used bottles. Oh, for that, I think you can make some crafts or a pencil holder with that. There's just so many things what you could do with it. Or another thing is that I recommend not using plastic when going shopping. You can either take your own bag, like your own plastic, not a plastic, like some your own kind of container to hold the food that you will buy and then you can just carry it yourself without using plastic. Or if you have no idea to what to do with the plastic, probably you can just keep it safe and don't really use it much. Just use it if it's really necessary. Ask them. What? Okay, what would you do what? to reduce pollution in our environment? <laughs> Throw your trash? 